What's up everybody? I wanted to do a video on Boston and just kind of go over some of the different ways that you could get to the park. There was a, a lot of different uh, interpretations after uh, the Expedition Unknown episode came out on Boston and you know, we found a, a, a lot of different ways to get there and this was kind of confirmed by JJP himself when he appeared on Josh Gates Tonight. He said, there is not one way to solve these. There's all matter of things. There's mathematics. There are optics. There's astronomical. There's geographical. There's topographical. There's mechanical, historical. We have a number of ickles in there. We go through the gamut on these things. And essentially, I think what he was telling us is that within each puzzle, there could be more than one way to arrive. And also, it tells us that the puzzles are not going to be solved the same way. What worked in the first couple of puzzles might not work in this puzzle and might not work in the next puzzle. And so there's, there, like he said, there is not one way to solve these. So I wanted to go through some of the different ways that we've kind of come up with how Boston uh, probably works and, and some of the different methods that you could have used to arrive at the park. First, we'll start with the verse. And we have the, the conditional if-then statement, if Thucydides is north of Xenophon, take five steps in the area of his direction. We know that this is on the front of the Boston Public Library, but we also know that it was taken from the Horace Walpole letters, where he had written, there will perhaps be a Thucydides at Boston and a Xenophon at New York. And so that gives us the answer, basically, to the if-then statement. If Thucydides is in Boston, which is north of New York, and Xenophon is in New York, then this statement would then be true. And that's what we need in order for the next part, the then, to happen. This part has to be true. The problem with these first four lines is we didn't know who his direction is because it's a vague pronoun and, and we don't have anything yet. Is it talking about Thucydides? Is it talking about Xenophon? Or is it talking about somebody else? Well, the answer is at the bottom of this verse, because the top is looking for truth. And in the very last line, we have, in truth, be free. And this is the final of these four lines that are kind of grouped together, which is describing Paul Revere's final ride, or his, his ride uh, from the Old North Church when he was warned that, warning that the, the British were coming. So 18th day, 12th hour, lit by lamplight, in truth, be free. This right here is the answer because it's based on in truth be free. And that's what led to our freedom in the Revolutionary War. This truth is the truth that is going to, is going to tell us who his direction is. It's Paul Revere's direction. And it also gives us a starting place. Where, did he, uh, where was the lamplight? That was at the Old North Church. So it's from there that we want to go in his direction. Now, JJB told us there's more than one way to solve these. This is the way in the verse to figure out who his direction is. But in the image, okay, Jason Krupat used his direction to mean Christopher Columbus, who he thought his face from the statue was in the painting. Okay, and here's something that's, that's really interesting that will help confirm these two paths that I'm going to show you. Okay, down here by the the Boston Globe okay this right here around the globe looks like a, a protractor okay right above that is this flower and the flower has four petals in four directions okay so that could symbolically represent a compass rose right above that this number here was used in reverse to find the zip code for the north end but if you just take this part right here, you have 112 with this circle right here would be the degree symbol. So 112 degrees from the compass rose using the protractor. Okay, that's essentially the, the breakdown of that. So if we take a look, there is one place in Boston where there is a compass rose. And so we'll travel over to Christopher Columbus Park. This is where they were at in the episode. Right up here is the Statue of Columbus. But here is the Compass Rose itself. 
And so if you were using a protractor and you were on like an XY grid, then the protractor would be basically along the, the axis of the east-west axis, right? And then at the top of the protractor where zero would be, would be the, uh, or where 90 would be, I'm sorry, would be where the north-south line would be, okay? And so essentially I made that protractor on here. And so we have this line here, which is representing the east-west line, and then 112 in each direction takes it, takes it out, okay? So now, take a look at where these lines go. We said right here, this was where Columbus was at, okay, right here. And he's facing out towards the, uh, the, the, the piers here that this was the steps that he used in, in his solution on EU. Well, look where the line is going, right to it. It's going right to these quote-unquote steps if you, were to quote, if you were to make the wharves into steps. The other line is going right in front of the Old North Church, which is where Paul Revere would have started if you were using his direction. So that clue right there in the image would confirm that his direction could be either Paul Revere, which is mentioned in the verse, or it could be Columbus, which would be mentioned in the image. And so one way would take you around this way as the five steps lead you to the park here. And then the other way, if you were going in Paul Revere's direction, he traveled up, up uh, Salem Street here and across to Copse Hill Terrace and then down. And, and if you go this direction, there's only four sets of steps. And if you come out on this side, there's five sets of steps. And you finish with your back to the stairs. You're now facing the ball field. And you can see the rest of the things that are in the verse right in front of you. And so there's really two different ways that you could have taken to get you to this spot. Now, I'm going to show you that there are some other ways in the image that you could have figured out which would have gotten you there as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the picture first. So some things that we found out after the fact. Number one, this bird down here is a representation of the Boston Pops. We learned that from JJP. Okay, on the box you have these, um, these towers. This could represent the Trinity Church. And then over here we have the jewel being taken away by the ferry. Okay, what's interesting is if you draw a line straight through from the bubble through the box, it goes right to the jewel. Okay, so if we know that this represents the Boston Pops, well, they play at Symphony Hall. And we have an, a place here in Trinity Church. So if we run a line from Symphony Hall through Trinity Church, where will that lead? Because in, in the image, these things lead to the jewel. So let's take a look at that real quick. If we go to Symphony Hall... Nope, I'm going back in time. Get rid of that. Okay, there's the front of Symphony Hall. And so if you go through Trinity, which is right there, it goes right to the Old North Church. You can see that line goes right through Trinity, and it ends up right at the same spot that this other line came from the compass rose. And so it's literally marking the, uh, the starting point for us. And then the other thing that was really interesting was that the people, most people thought that the, the names on the wall at Boston didn't mean anything. But in reality, if you run the line from Symphony Hall through those names at the old Boston, uh, at the uh, Boston Public Library, those names are on this front section of the wall. That line will take you to the end at the baseball field. So Symphony Hall with the bubble was actually a very important clue for giving you the starting point and the end point. We'll pick up a little bit more on the next video.